Hello everybody, welcome to Percussion Axiom TV. I'm your host Tom Burrett and this is episode number 33. Today's axiom is know your tools. We're going to do maybe I think a two-part episode here. Um, you know, I wanted to do a show this weekend and just never quite got around to it. So here we are late on a Monday night, so I apologize. This could be kind of a, a strange show kind of out there, maybe a little bit all over the place, but I miss you guys. And I'm going to just do this to get it out there and to start this two-parter. So uh, anyway, great time doing the Stout Etude. Thanks to you guys who are letting me know you finished it. Still, I know a bunch of you guys that are yet to finish, but please let me know as you do that. Um, it's really great to kind of interact with you guys and see who's finished and who's not. And I finally got around to telling you Stout that we did this, so hopefully he'll check it out. And um, we'll see what he has to say about it. Um, okay, so before we get into today's axiom more uh, more deeply, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some announcements, some things that got coming up. Um, I'm actually pretty relaxed right now because I don't have to play for you guys today. I've been, you know, I've been coming at you with some playing, you know. So anyway, we're going to just catch up on some things that are going on. Um, I tweeted out earlier about the uh, the LHS Lee Howard Stevens um, Rimba seminar this summer. There's a few days left. I think four or five now where you could actually uh, register for that. There's still a few slots open, so I'd love for you guys to uh, to sign up for that. You can go to I'll, I'll leave a link in the show notes, but go to mostlymarimba.com and click on seminars, and you can check out. There's some great guests. Uh, Marta Klimasara is going to be there. She's really really fantastic. Chris Norton, one of my best friends, fantastic marimba player. Susan Powell, we were in school together. She's going to be there, and of course Gordon Stout, and I'll be there on June 11th. I think is my concert. So we'd love to see you guys there. Even if you're in Jersey, you want to come to the concert. You know, you're more than welcome to do that. So. Um, that's really, really I'm looking forward to that. And then also the ZMF Festival. We've talked about that in previous shows, but come check that out. Um, I, think a sub, I think a couple of you are going to that. If you guys are going to be at these things, I want to know about it, so let me know somehow. Um, we've got some really, really cool things I've been working really hard uh, on lining up for next year. Um, we're really excited to have the Soap Percussion Group in residence uh, for a few times, once in the fall and then for a long period in the, in the spring semester. And then in the spring semester, I think it's March 11th of 010, they're going to be performing uh, a new piece by Steve Rice that they committed, uh, committed that they commissioned for two marimbas and two vibe vibraphones. So that's going to be that's going to be really a lot of fun. We're looking forward to that. We've got a lot of stuff in the works for that as well. So um, that's something that I've been working really hard on. But uh, getting back to some more local times, if you're in Austin or anywhere near. Uh, if you want to play on this concert, there's no pay, but Graham Reynolds, who's a local Austin composer who I've been working with closely, uh, is doing a piece for 50 drummers on April 23rd as part of the Fusebach Festival. I'll try to leave a, a link to that as well. So if you're a drummer, you can play, you play drums and per percussion, and you're in Austin, let me know, and, and you're in on the gig, okay? He's writing a piece for 50 drummers as part of this festival, and I'm trying to round up... 50, 50 players for this thing, so uh, we'd love to have you for that. So let me know. Uh, we're really psyched about April fourteenth. This UT percussion group concert um, that'll be live streamed live. So um, I'll send that link out that day. You can go to I think it's um, what is it uh, music.utexas.edu to check that out. But I'll send a link out on the fourteenth. It's Tuesday night. The UT percussion group our, our big spring performance. We're doing uh, two Holland and pieces. Whole toy laid down. My freshmen are playing that, and they're just burning it up. It's great. And then um, Percussion Quartet um, by David Hollanden. I think it's the number number one or number two. I don't remember. And then uh, we're doing uh, Zanakis Poe Movement from from uh, Playoffs, which is going to be you know just massive. Really psyched about doing that. And then new, the new Dan Welcher Quartet as well. And there's one more thing. Oh, yeah, this a world premiere by a local Austin composer, Graham Reynolds called Whale Drum, which is really interesting. So anyway, I'll send out a link that day on, April, on Tuesday, April 14th. I'm not sure we'll have to do another show before that. Maybe we will. We'll see. But uh, we'd love to have you check that out live via webcast. Uh, and then I'm playing this new Michael Torkey piece for, um, let's see, marimba and, where is it? and um, flute and cello with the Soli New Music Ensemble after the forest fire. Uh, I can link that up too. Boy, I have a lot of linking up to do after this episode. But uh, that's going to be in San Antonio with the Soli New Music Ensemble, which is a really interesting group down in San Antonio. And we're also playing um, Peter Maxwell Davies' Eight Songs for Mad King, which I've always wanted to do and haven't been able to do yet. So, so that's May 26th and 27th. So this is some really cool stuff coming up. 
and uh, I've been practicing and learning tons of notes lately, and it's hard. It's very hard. So anyway, enough of that business stuff. Um, so we're going to do part one of the rest of the show here on mallets and um, know your tools. That's today's axiom. And, you know, I think, you know, we all have lots of marimba mallets and we have, you know, we are, we're always looking for the right, the perfect stick and da 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 right? I mean, we all, we all try to do that. And I think sometimes, though, it's, uh, it's difficult, uh, especially with younger players, to really understand what the mallet is that you're using and what it's composed of and what it, where it should be used and how it should be used. So I just want to get some information out there. We're going to spend part two kind of looking at the experience that I had developing the mallets that I designed for Malatech, the Tom Bird series. Um, but before we do that, we're just going to do some basics on kind of mallet design. Um, just throw a little bit of information out there for you guys. And, and of course, I'm always interested in your uh, interaction as well. So um, let's far, we're going to start just first with the shafts, okay? So, you know, most of us are used to this, uh, you know, birch mallet. But I remember when I first showed up Ithaca in 1989, I hate to say that, but that's how long ago it was. Gordon had, Gordon Stout, when I started studying with him, he had a bunch of mallets that were, were quite a bit shorter than these, actually, and had rattan. And uh, the, the, the wrap, of course, was completely different than this and something he made uh, exclusively at the time. Um, but really, we went with Birch, I think, mostly because uh, when the Stevens Group became very popular, you know, when Lee was developing that, he needed something much more rigid. So that's why we went with um, Rattan, or I'm sorry, that's why we went with Birch. Um, but I still think uh, Rattan is best for two mallet playing. And, you know, when I see younger players just using their four mallet mallets in a pair for playing two mallet rumble pieces, you know, it kind of bugs me because I think the Rattan feel for two mallet playing is so much better. So that, you know, I've, I've been encouraging Malatech to make some two mallet mallets with rattan handles and haven't made too much headway on that. But I think it's important, actually, that you guys have some two mallet mallets. And I love the Dave Friedman 16s, I think is what they are. I use those all the time for two mallet marimba. I think they're really great. They have the rattan shaft and a real quick attack. So anyway, that's a little bit about shaft. Of course, if you're playing Steven's grip, I know like a lot of you do out there, um, the rattan is probably preferable. If you don't because you're holding the mallet up at a cross grip so further up, then you know that flexibility of the rattan is probably not going to bother you. So that's the first thing, rattan versus birch. Most of all, I think you guys should just be using rattan for two mallets. I mean, that's just the most comfortable thing I can think of. Core is very important. Rubber or plastic. Okay, If you have a rubber core underneath that mallet, it's really not going to have but one tone to it, whether you're playing softly or loudly. All right. So, you know, most rubber cores are pretty stuffy in the top register, but they sound great in the low register. If you have a plastic core, it's going to be multi-tonal probably, right? So the more you dig into the mallet, the more it's going to dig and, and sort of punch through that core in the yarn. I'm sorry, the rubber around it in the yarn. Um, so that, that type of mallet can work better throughout the whole range of the instrument and might maybe not sound so great in the bottom range of the instrument, but it might work much better up at the top. Um, so those are the two basic cores I think that are most common. And then of course you have the, the latex rubber around each core and then the uh, yarn around that core. It's either going to be a durable yarn or a not so durable yarn. All right. So if you, if you have a, you know, typically the durable yarn is going to be better for a practice mallet, right? And it's going to last a lot longer than a softer yarn that's going to have a less obvious attack and a more smoother attack, but also going to be wear much, much, you know, much smoother. So. I don't know why a lot of you guys insist on practicing all the time with your soft yarn mallets. They're going to wear a lot faster, and these things don't last forever. So we went through that really fast. We're going to have to get more into specifics. Into specifics. Like I told you, it's going to be a wild show, right? It's too late here. Specifics in the next episode. I hope you check that out. We're going to get more into detail with the Tom Burrett mallets especially. But remember about shaft, core, rubber, or plastic. You have to know which one's which. And, and you know, don't practice with your mallets that are, you know, not supposed to last very long because they, you know, they have a softer yarn on them. Practice with the mallets that have a more durable yarn. Okay, so more durable yarn mallets would be like the Concerto series from Malatech. These will last forever. A less durable yarn would be like the uh, Lee Stevens mallet, right? That's not going to last very long. You'll, you'll, you'll chew through those pretty quickly. All right, so if you can guess, you get a free prize if you can guess what this mallet is. See that there? If you can guess, leave a comment. Let me know what you think that is. So that's part one of the question of the episode. Part two is, uh, let's see, what is your favorite mallet of all time? just want to know. So next time we'll get into the more specifics of the Tom Burrett series and kind of how we did that and what went into that and how they're designed. And hopefully that can be a reference for everybody as they, uh, 
because they purchase and, and check them out. So, all right. Thanks so much, you guys. I'm so glad that I was able to get this out for you tonight. And uh, I want to hear your comments. Please leave me comments. Thomasburrett.tumblr.com. Thanks. See you next time.